अकारमयी उकारमयी मकारमयी ओंकारमयी अकारमयी उकारमयी मकारमयी ओंकारमयी अकारमयी उकारमयी मकारमयी ओंकारमयी I offer my humble pranams at the lotus feet of divine mother and beloved bhagwan who are responsible for creation sustenance and dissolution of this entire universe loving sairams to respected elders brothers and sisters and children thank you all for inviting me for this satsang swami in one of his telugu poems he shared about his previous incarnation and the connection he had with his devotees he says a ramachandrude sai ramachandrudai tana bantulanu kanuganaga vache the same rama has come in the form of sai rama to recognize his army ananda balude ananda baludai tana varini gurtimpa tarali vache the same krishna blissful child of nanda and yashoda he has come in the form of sai krishna to recognize his gopis and gopalas aa ishude bala sai ishudai ita tana gumpu to aadukonaga vache the same ishwara has come in the form of sai ishwara to play with his friends aa maha vishnuve ee mahi vishnuvai ita tana ayudhamulu chekonaga vache bhagwan says the maha vishnu from vaikuntha he has come in the form of sai vishnu to take his instruments which are his devotees so he can use all of us in his divine mission brahma sri gandikota subramanya shastri garu wrote beautifully about bhagwan's tattvam and the details of the vedapursha saptah yagna and how all these beautiful ceremonies are conducted during navratri time in his book titled sri satya sai avatar vaibhavam or glory of sri satya sai avatar so he shares a unique experience on one shankara jayanti day bhagwan had asked uh, sri shastri garu to speak book in the divine presence the next morning shastri ji had to leave puttaparthi so he approached bhagwan for his blessings swami had called him inside and he had materialized a black and white picture and showed it to sri shastri garu and in that picture there is this beautiful image of swami and behind that is the shivalinga and swami explained the meaning behind this word sai he said sa means sada shiva or father ai is amba or shiva shakti he said or divine mother this is when sri shastri garu understood that when he spoke the other day he spoke about the significance of bhagwan's divine name in terms of brahma vishnu and gayatri mata and he didn't speak on shiva aspect of bhagwan so he realized that swami not only filled the gap in his explanation but also revealed that his true form is shiva and which is the ever blissful and sacred divine entity so swami is sada shiva and shiva shakti in this connection i would like to share an experience that took place some 15 years ago so at that uh, on that particular day bhagwan had called my father and he graciously allowed him to do pada seva so as my father was gently pressing bhagwan's feet he happened to see these imprints of uh, anklets on bhagwan's left ankle he was surprised and he checked on swami's uh, right ankle and there was nothing in there and so he gathered courage and he asked bhagwan about this this design and and this imprints and swami said this is the shiva shakti tattvam he said and he also explained that the right half of his body represents shiva 
consciousness or creation, creator. And the left part of his body represents Shakti, Divine Mother or creation, Swami said. Just like a diamond, Bhagwan has various facets to him. He's a Divine Mother, his Divine Father, inspiring teacher, best friend, and our Guru. Millions of devotees have received immense love and motherly affection from Bhagwan. All of us have received from him. I'd like to share some of those experiences where he showered so much of love and warmth on our, on our grandmother. So it's in the year 1972, my parents have come to see Bhagwan in Puttaparthi. All of us were there, we were children. And uh, Swami did not talk to us and he did not give us vibhuti or anything like that. My mother was very ill, but being in the presence of Swami and receiving his energy and vibrations that just brought healing and comfort to our mother. And my father comes from a Brahma Samaj background and he uh, never believed in any avatars, but uh, keeping her well-being as a priority, he, he took all of us to Puttaparthi. Puttaparthi. So when we returned back to our hometown, slowly and steadily, my mother started uh, to, uh, to be okay and her health improved. And uh, my father saw this phenomenal change that took place in her. And so he too developed interest in Swami's teachings and he started reading his literature and fell in love with, with Swami's universal teachings and, and it resonated with him. But his parents were not interested in him taking part in Sai activities and becoming a part of the organization. But both uh, my parents continued to take part in Seva activities. And my father would share stories of Swami and messages with devotees. So it's in the year 1982, Bhagavan had come to our hometown to inaugurate this mandir, Sri Satya Sai Shanti Sudha. Swami had given this name to that beautiful building. And it was built by the devotees. And uh, uh, Swami had come. He spent one and a half days there. He allowed 400 plus volunteers to dine with him. And that evening he gave a discourse. And my grandmother was fortunate to see him from distance. And it's the first time she heard him speak. And again, in the year 1988, Swami very lovingly performed my wedding with Sham in Puttaparthi. So my mother's parents and my father's mother, they joined the wedding group and Swami had invited them uh, to the interview room. And Swami spoke to my mother's father and he said that he is a bhakta. Uh, he said, you are a Gandhian and you have uh, sacrificed a lot. And Swami materialized a Sivalingam and gave it to him and asked him to uh, offer uh, Abhishekam to him, to the Shivalinga and take the Tirtham every day. So Swami spoke to my grandmother and uh, he said that she was an honest officer and she was the first graduate from Andhra Pradesh to study at Queen Mary's College at Chennai. And uh, he said that many people tried to take advantage of her. They tried to bribe her, but uh, she held on to uh, the beliefs and her principles. And Swami said that uh, he liked that special quality in her. And he also mentioned that she used to write articles to this Brahma Samaj magazine called Anjali. And uh, all of these details were known only to our family. Swami shared so many things about her. And uh, Swami asked her why she was wearing a collar around her neck. And she said, Swami, uh, you know, Mom, I have a neck pain. And Bhagwan asked her to remove the collar and he materialized Navaratna Mala and put it around her neck. And he said, from today onwards, your pain will reduce, he said. And Swami gave a beautiful sari to her. And the next day again, he called my father and gave another sari to be given to his mother. And my father said, Swami, she's already received a gift from you yesterday. And Swami said, yes, I know, but I'm giving her another gift because she has given you to me, he said. 
And in the year uh, 1990, Swami had uh, invited my grandmother to come and uh, to attend uh, the summer courses at Whitefield. She was in her 80s and uh, she had come because Swami had called her. And Bhagwan saw me in darshan lines and he said, at that time I was pregnant and he said, Swami will send the car and you join your grandmother, both of you come and attend the summer courses, he said. So we were very fortunate. We, we could take part in the summer courses. And on the last day, Bhagwan had called us for an interview. And Swami shared a lot of personal details with her. And uh, he materialized a ring and earrings for her. And he said, Amma, you wanted this particular design for a long time and you didn't uh, discuss it with anyone. He, you didn't tell your husband, but Swami knows this. Swami is giving it to you, he said. I believe it's in the year 2007, Atirudra Mahayagna took place in Chennai. And uh, along with many devotees and students, my father accompanied Bhagwan. And on the last day of the program, Bhagwan uh, sent a word for my father and uh, my father went to see Swami. And when Swami came from his room, Bhagwan was perspiring and his robe was wet and he was shedding tears. And he came close to my father and he held my father's hands in his hands and uh, he said, Amma, Amma. And he cried like any family member. He was like a father. And he said, your mother is thinking of you. She's not well. And you go and spend time with her. And then Bhagwan materialized Vibhuti and gave, gave it to my father. So when my father reached Hyderabad, my grandmother was in the hospital. And uh, she said, I'm thinking of you and I'm asking your Baba to send you. And so he heard my prayers, she said. So when my father was working in the Sri Satsai Institute of Higher Learning, my grandmother was in Hyderabad. Bhagwan is in Puttaparthi. Whenever she thought of my father, Swami would ask my father to go and see her in, in Hyderabad. So this kind of a heart to heart connection Bhagwan had with her though she was not his uh, devotee. When we reflect on Bhagwan's caring and uh, stern um, fatherly uh, nature, I remember um, reading this book titled Prema Bandham uh, by Sri Ramana Rao Garu. And he shares profound teachings that he's learned in the presence of Bhagwan. So I chose three of those stories to share with all of you today. And the first uh, incident took place in the year 1974 during Dasaras. So on the first day, as the procession started, a Swami was gently walking forward and there were hundreds, thousands of devotees that were seated and there were 1200 volunteers that were there. And Sri Raman Rao Garu was the in charge there. And uh, a group of restless uh, devotees got up and they pushed the Sevadal and rushed toward the procession to see Swami. And the Sevadal stopped them and asked them to go back. And in all of that, there was this one uh, young adult that approached Raman Rao Garu and he begged him and asked him um, not to send him away. And he explained that he came early in the morning and he's waiting for Bhagwan's darshan along with the rest of the devotees. And he's not a part of these restless devotees that rushed forward and made noise. But uh, Raman Rao Garu uh, did not listen to him and he pushed him aside. And as he needed to take care of the discipline as Bhagwan was approaching. But the devotees that left again came back and they were wild and they pushed the Sevadal. And in all of that, there was a stampede. Raman Ragaru fell on the sand and devotees fell on him and he was injured. So some Sevadal brothers uh, assisted him and they took him to the backstage of the Purnachandra auditorium where he was asked to uh, lie down on a bench. He was beat up and he couldn't move and uh, he was bleeding and 
but he was able to hear everything. By then, Swami had entered the Purnachandra auditorium and he came to the backstage and he saw Ramandra Garu lying on the bench in a corner. And uh, um, he asked Kasturi Garu, what is this fellow doing here? Why is he here? He says. And Kasturi Garu then uh, replied to Bhagwan and he said, Swami, um, Ramandra was uh, involved in the crowd control and, and there was a stampede and uh, he got hurt, Swami. He said, no, no, no. He's punished for his mistake. There was this young boy who kept on explaining to him that he came early to have Bhagwan's darshan. And, uh, but he didn't pay attention to his words and he pushed him away. That's why he had to go through this punishment, Swami said. And later on, after the program was finished and Sevadar brothers uh, brought uh, Sri Raman Raghavaru to his room and uh, he couldn't go for darshan for nine more days. By then the Dasra celebrations were completed. So uh, after the nine, nine days and he came back for darshan and with the help of uh, a few volunteers. And by then Swami was outside and uh, all the Sevadar brothers and sisters were seated in line. Swami was walking among the lines and he was distributing sweets, clothes to all the, the Sevadal for their excellent service. And uh, Swami came right in front of Sri Ramandra Agaru and uh, he was able to touch Bhagwan's feet, but Swami did not look at him. There was no eye contact and he felt very disappointed. And he writes in that book, he says, Swami taught me a great lesson when we are serving Bhagwan, when we are in his service, we need to practice compassion and patience, he says. And he shares another story that also took place in late 70s. Uh, at that time, some of the Sai organizers from uh, East Godavari district of Andhra Pradesh had requested Swami to come and bless the devotees in that area. So Swami very lovingly agreed. And so he asked uh, Sri Raman Rao Garu and Sri Ra uh, Satyamurti Garu from Hyderabad, who's also another ardent devotee of Bhagwan, and Sri Rama Rao Garu. So Swami was in the car and these three devotees are there and they were uh, driving Bhagwan to the East Godavari area. And that particular evening, Bhagwan's uh, discourse was scheduled in a, a town called Ambaji Pit. So as they, as they were passing by the villages and the outskirts, they saw an elderly lady and one young lady with two children. And Swami asked them to stop the car. And he'd asked uh, Raman Garu and Satyamurti Garu to go and call the elderly lady and rest of the family to come closer to the car so Swami can give his blessings. So these two men, they got out of the car and as they approached the family, the elderly lady told them that uh, they were walking to Ambaji Pit and they heard that Sai Baba is going to come. And uh, the lady said that uh, we are longing to see Sai Baba and we want to um, take blessings from him. And this is when Sri Ramandra Garu uh, tells her that Amma, the Sai Baba that you're going to see in Ambaji Pit is here in the car. And the lady was not believing them. And so uh, Raman Raghavaru explained to the young lady, the daughter-in-law and asked her to see in the back seat. And uh, so the daughter-in-law saw Bhagwan and um, explained to the mother-in-law and then she believed. And they all came close to the car and Swami got down and Swami looked at the elderly lady and said, with so much of compassion, said, your son was killed last year. And the people who ever were responsible for it, and they have taken away his property. It's in the court now. But I promise you that justice will be done. Bhagwan will help you. I'll take care of your family, he said. Amma, if you come to Ambaji Pet, you cannot talk to me. You cannot meet me. That is why I chose to come this way, so I can give you my blessings. This is what Swami told them. And he had a small pouch in his hand. He opened the bag and he pulled... Uh, few bundles of currency notes and gave it to the grandmother. And he gave uh, apples and vibhuti packets to the family and asked them to return 
to their town. And, and they just turned back and they did not even take his Pada Namaskar, but they had devotion to him. And Sri Ramandragaru writes in that book, he says, it's their innocence, humility, and love for God. And they thought of Bhagwan that itself brought a divine grace. Lord Narayana says to Narada, Naham vasami vai kunte na yogi hridaye ravav madbhatta yatra dayante tatra tishtami narada tatra tishtami narada o narada i am not in vaikunta i don't live in the hearts of yogis or saints but i am there when my devotee thinks of me when my devotees chant my name and there is this last story that takes place again in the late 70s and if you all remember swami used to uh, live uh, in the room upstairs and around the mandiram gopuram was being constructed at at the at that time and swami had asked four workers to come and start the work um, around 6:30 in the evening and finish it before midnight and swami had uh, called sri raman rao garu and praful patel to join those four workers and help them and finish the work um, before midnight so uh, around 6:30 uh, sri raman rao garu and praful patel uh, they have decided to go and have their dinner because they were worried if it gets delayed they may not uh, get any food so by the time they reached the mand- mandiram site um, these four workers were engrossed uh, in the project and they were on the on the ladders and so these two joined and started working with them but in between they were ta- they were wondering whether uh, they can go to their rooms uh, on time whether they can get good sleep or not and it was getting cold and so on and so forth so as they were having these thoughts the work got finished and bhagwan arrived with a couple of students behind him and swami asked all of them to come down and uh, swami asked them to go and wash their hands and all of them went to wash their hands and one of the workers um, he just rushed to bhagwan to take pada namaskar and he had um, some mud and oil on his uh, hands and when he touched bhagwan's feet it got rubbed on his feet and also got smeared on his robe so after that swami asked the students to serve all these uh, volunteers and naturally the students thought that swami wanted uh, uh, them to serve all the six people so they've arranged six banana leaves and this is when uh, swami told the students to serve for only those four workers and he said these two have had their dinner already so after the dinner was served swami called all the six volunteers and he gave them blessings and but he gave uh, his love and attention to those four workers and at the end sri raman rao garu comes uh, to bhagwan and he uh, did uh, pada namaskar and he says swami on your robe we see some stains and dirt swami bhagwan says marakalu kaavu marakatalu they are not stains bangaru they are gems he said and raman rao garu understood that uh, swami was gently um, teaching him a lesson on being all inclusive they did not care about anybody it was not intentional but they just went ahead and ate by themselves but swami being the mother he taught them this great lesson in a gentle way bhagwan being our divine mother and father teaches us tests us trains us and brings this understanding and uh, transformation in us so we will be better people and we can serve in his mission i would like to conclude with a the bhajan all on the lord you love unceasingly 
he will be listening shri satya sai he understands the call of your heart wanting him needing him shri satya sai there is a love that he can't resist constantly calling him shri satya sai offer your love to the lord of the universe he will be listening he always is he will be listening shri satya sai thank you all for giving me this opportunity i pray to bhagwan to shower his blessings guidance love and grace on all of us thank you jay sairam